Welcome to another Unity tutorial. If you've been following along on my channel, I've been doing some VR stuff, but I'm sorry I'm taking another step away because I finally decided, hey, I wanna figure out remote config. What is remote config? What remote config is, is it lets you remotely change variables in your Unity project without having to do a build. So this is great for games like this one I'm goofing around with right now, Super Awesome Fighting Time, which is just a 2D fighter. So if I have my users playing and they say, hey, Ortiz is a little bit overpowered, I can go in there and I can adjust either his health, or his punching power, stuff like that. Um, now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, you know that I use Playmaker for pretty much everything. So I've been using Playmaker for two-ish years now, maybe. And um, I've gotten to the point to where I've, I've also learned enough that I can create some custom actions. And I was surprised there weren't any remote config actions. I thought I had found some, but they were for something that used to exist with Unity called remote analytics or something like that. But there wasn't any actions for remote config. Um, and so I watched some tutorials online. I'm like, these scripts seem simple enough. Let's see if I can create a custom action for it. Um, I kind of bit off a huge chunk because what I wanted was one action. Um, because I'd seen other Playmaker actions where you could do this, where you could uh, choose how many different variables you want to pull. And you don't have to say if what type of variable it is, whether it's a bool, which is true, false, an int, which is a number without a decimal, a float, which is a number with a decimal, or a string, which is characters. Um, so I wanted an action where you could say how many variables you wanted, and you could put the keys, and you could say what type of variable type it was. So I built this beautiful action, and I'll show you what it looks like, and then I'll tell you that it doesn't work. Um, but don't worry, I have some that do. So there's this action here that I created called uh, get remote config variables. Um, now remote config allows you to do a couple other different variable types like JSON and long, um, but uh, Playmaker can't handle those types of variables. So floats, bools, ints, and strings, all that work. So the action looks like it works. Um, I could come in here and I could say, hey, I want 10 different keys. I could put in my keys. I could choose the variable type um, and then I could save it as a variable and all that worked, but when it ran, it didn't work. I don't know why. Uh, maybe there's something about remote config that doesn't like running through an array, which is essentially what I had the script doing. Um, anyways, I was really power, proud of the script, but in the meantime, like, hey, let's just get this available for users. And so I did. So how are we gonna use a remote config? Um, let's just delete all this and let's just show you how remote config works. So the first thing you need is you need remote config added to your project. So go to window package manager, and um, go to Unity Registry in the Package Manager and search Remote Config, just type Remote, it'll be the only thing there, install it. As you can see, I already have it installed. The next thing you wanna do is go to Window and then Remote Config. Now, I already have mine set up, and um, but if you don't already have it set up and you haven't used any of Unity's services yet, it's gonna say, hey, it's gonna have a huge long paragraph that in a nutshell just says, come over here and click on the cloud icon in Unity so that you can enable Unity services. And so if you haven't set up services yet, there'll be a, a button here to go into your preferences. And it's essentially gonna take you to project settings and services and it's gonna have you set up your services. If you don't already have your project set up in Unity services, um, you can either go to your dashboard, which I don't recommend because just getting there is a pain in the butt. But if you launch it from here, um, it'll take you there. But otherwise, from this window, it'll let you just say, hey, you know what? Go ahead and create a project for me in Unity Services for this project. And the name it'll create is whatever the name that you stored it on your computer as. Um, now you can go into your um, dashboard and you can rename it. So like this, my actual project folder is called May 25th Multiplayer Test, um, but I probably want to rename this to something else. So if I wanted to now, I could go to my dashboard it opens up on another screen here. Do, 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 do. And here we have my May 25th multiplayer test. I'm gonna click on project settings. I'm already in project settings. I'm gonna click edit and we're just gonna call this super awesome fighting time and save. Cool, you don't have to do that step, but it's there. Okay, so um, once you have that set up, then you can go back to remote config. And the first time I was using remote config, I wasn't able to actually create any variables here, um, but I can, um, or you can also create them in the dashboard. So if I click view in dashboard, it's gonna take me to the Unity dashboard. And it's a bit weird to try to find remote config because it doesn't take you directly there, but just scroll down, find remote config, and then click environments on the left-hand side. And um, by default, you'll have a production environment, but maybe you want some different environments, beta, alpha, test, stuff like that. And you can go to view config values. And as you can see, I don't have any. Um, I can create one. I can go to add a key. 
and we'll just start with a string and we're just going to call this test string and let's give it a value of I'll just put my name all right click add and then make sure you click save so now if I minimize this and I go to my remote config window I can pull and boom we have a string there all right but I'm already here so let me add a another setting um, so let's choose this one be a bool um, we'll say is cool and we're just gonna say that um, I want it to be true okay and if I push that now and then I go view it in my dashboard which I'll close that and no, the name hasn't changed why did my name not change that's weird um but if i refresh this page now we should now see my bool in here all right cool and let's just close that and let's just add the other two types that we're going to be messing with an int and so we're just going to call this uh, test int and let's make it seven and then let's do a float and we'll just call it test float and we'll call it 7.7 .7. And let's push those. All right, so now if I go to my dashboard and we scroll down to remote config, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm doing this on my work break. <laughs> and we click environments and we go to production, view config values. There they all are. All right, so what's cool about this is you could probably open this up like on your cell phone, like you're out on the road or you're on vacation and all your users say, hey, this is Jack, the values are crazy. You could log into your um, remote config via mobile, change these values, save it, and it'll push out to everyone's devices right away. But how do we do that? All right, so let's say, for example, um, I'm going to go ahead and keep this wait state here. I honestly don't know if it's needed, but I'm just going to leave it there. You know what? Let's not. Let's just let's just see if it can do it on its own without a wait state. All right, so I'm going to come in here, and I have um, my four things. So I have my get remote config string, get remote config int, get remote config float, get remote config bool. Ignore the bools, it doesn't work, and um, variables, they don't work, as I showed you. Um, I'll put this up on my itch page. So go to mrphilipjoel.itch.io. Don't get distracted by my game jam games. Actually do, some of them are kind of actually pretty fun. Built in six hours or less, most of them I targeted for three hours, but I even built a hide and seek game multiplayer in less than six hours, so fun times. Um, but I have some assets up there. Um, check out uh, cloudlogin.dev. That's a great one. Um, it's actually an integration I built for somebody who hosts player authentication and cloud-based um, storage stuff. And then um, I'll have this one up there as well. It's not up there yet, but by the time you see this video, it'll be up. All right, so now back to all of our stuff. So we need to know what keys we're trying to get here. So um, we want to get, this first one's a bool. So it's is Philip cool? And we're going to store this as um, is cool. Okay, so by default, it's false, but what's going to happen is hopefully remote config will set it for true. And here we have a float, which currently um, we have it up there as 7.7, .7, but we're going to, this is our test float, and we're just going to save the variable as test float. Okay, keeping things simple for now. And then we want an int. Um, so this test int is the key, and I'm just going to save this as variable test int. And then get config string, we're going to call this test string. And save it as test string as you can see um these valuables are all false or zeros or nothing but let's run the project let's delete that finish state all right let's see if this works in the first state i doubt it but let's see what happens It works. <laughs> Look at that. It went out. It got the variables true 7.77 .7 and Philip. So why would you use this? Well, let's say that um, I put a practice mode in my super awesome fighting time game. Um, so um, I don't know, maybe it's just for testing purposes. I only wanted around for a certain amount of time while I could collect bug data and get reports from players. And then I'm going to disable it while I fix those. Um, so let's just delete this whole FSM. Uh, start over. All right, so let's just um, remove component, yeah. All right, so um, here in this game object, we're gonna add a new FSM, and we are going to, in our remote config, we're going to, uh, let's just trash all those and push that out. I'm gonna add a setting, and I'm gonna call this a bool, and I'm just gonna call this practice button. Okay, and, um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave it at false, but we're gonna, yeah, we're we'll just leaving it at false. All right, so we'll come back to the game here. So let's say we want to get our remote config bool, and the key that we want is practice button. 
And so I'm just going to store it as practice button. Okay, and then let's do a bool test. Oh, I'm using a trackpad right now. I don't have my USB mouse plugged in. All right, and so now let's test a uh, practice button. And um, if it's true, do nothing. If it's false, let's disable practice. Okay, and so if it's false, we're going to disable practice. And so activate game object. So let's buy game object. Uh, practice button, and we're going to deactivate it. Now, we need to make sure, by default, otherwise it's not going to be a good test, we want our practice button to be true, right? Um, so it's currently true. Now, this is also kind of a bad test. I know that it works, but I really should have it be false and then try to get the, the true state because, uh, yeah, let's do that. So let's say the practice button is off because if the action didn't work, it would return as false, and so it's a bad test. All right, so let's say um, if it's true, practice button is true, let's enable practice. So you had players like, hey, we really missed that practice mode you had. Can we get it back? So you're going to re-enable practice. So let's do this, and then the practice button, we're going to activate. So as you can see, there is no practice button, and our practice button variable, we want it to be false. Okay, so our practice button variable is currently false, but what's going to happen is it's going to go up to our remote configs, which we've remotely set to, let's set it to true now. Glad I checked all those things. And so now it should see, hey, this should not be true. And we're going to do the bull test. It's true. And it's going to bring the practice button back. Hitting play. I don't think I pushed it. <laughs> Push. All right, let's try again. All right, but it didn't work because um, I needed to give it some time to run this bool test. This wouldn't be a great practice for this to check every frame. Um, <laughs> but for now, we're just going to do every frame so that you can see that it works. You don't want to be in a different state for when it finishes. But there we go. Every frame, boom, practice button's back, and there you have it. So, hey, check out mrphilipjoel.itch.io. I'll put these actions up there. I'll call it remote config playmaker actions. How about that? All right, so until next time, this has been Philip with another Unity playmaker tutorial tip trick thingamajig. Um, if you like supporting the channel, hey, this took some time to build. Um, I have a Patreon page. Um, I'll link it in the description, so check out my Patreon page. Um, buy me a cup of coffee through that. Really appreciate it. Um, otherwise, just like, comment, subscribe, share the word. Help me grow this channel. See you next time.